Hello friends and welcome, welcome back. In this video I want to uh, answer a question that um, Irki Varen or Klaus um, posted on my video uh, Voice of Lancelot Quench's answer where I went uh, very quickly to the design, how I went through the design. Um, but Klaus is obviously really looking at designing his loudspeaker, he's grappling with the actual, actual questions and the questions that he had, and I'll just, I won't read out his, his, his exact question, but basically he wants to know how I got through the distance, how much space th there was to be left in, in, in the cabinet um, and why, why, um, why the internal baffle runs from the back to the front um, if you look for, uh, for, for downwards, um, why is it not the other way around and so in order to um, answer those questions what I'll do is just take you to the design and so the design is basic structure like this so what I did first did is made a concept sketch of how I wanted the speaker to look and also consider that I have to cut these panels out of uh, plywood, which is 120 centimeters wide. So, in order to get it efficiently out of the wood, I had certain limitations, and so I wanted them to see how long the folded horn would be, and then step number two is to put that into a program that can do the calculations of the horn and simulate the frequency response given the parameters. And after that, of course, you can fit that horn design and make it this foil folded design. But first we design the whole horn uh, without um, considering the, the folding. Now, one of the nice things about um, a parabolic shaped horn, and this is one of the options that you can choose, is that it can be simulated quite well by just having a divider. So a parabolically ex expanding horn is very well approximated by just having a, a fixed divider um, through the middle. Um, and so I'll later in the program, in step two, I'll use the parabolic horn shape as the, 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 the what I give the program. Um, that, that is the instruction I give to the program to calculate the horn design. But what I first did is make this concept sketch. So that is step number one. So I knew I wanted to have the compression driver here. Um, I knew I went to the woofer somewhere here. And why I chose the woofer, why I had not, I could have also put the woofer say in this, this side, which would mean that um, this, the, 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 it would have run this way. And that is a perfectly fine option, but I wanted a, bit, a little bit more distance um, to the, um, behind the woofer. So I wouldn't have too many uh, the, 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 the back of the woofer too close to the divider. So that's why I chose this. Also, the frequency response is slightly um, smoother here if you put the woofer on this side uh, compared to that side. And so, you, you know, the slant at the top would have been that if you don't mention it. Um, the only disadvantage of doing this, yes, you get a smoother response, but um, the uh, the, the, the resonant frequency, so the, 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 the frequency of the bass reflex board and the frequency of, the, of the, the woofer itself will be slightly higher when it's here. And I think it's because this, the, the compression factor, is not, the loading at the back is not as good as it would be when you're in the smaller part, part of the horn. So um, if that extension is really important to you, for example, if you're working with a smaller cabinet and you want to get the last one out of it and you're only talking maybe you know maybe two two hertz or so that it goes down by putting it on this on on, um, on the small side of the horn so when the horn would be uh, when the, the divider would be running away from you rather than towards you as in my design so that's why i chose this now the second thing was and, and it, that wasn't really calculated just yet in, in my concept sketch um, is that I wanted to leave some headroom to to account for um, the compression driver being in the way of this horn, and so the compression driver is quite voluminous. Um, you know, it's quite quite huge. So what I wanted is, is is leave a couple of extra centimeters here to account for that that solid space that get um, gets taken away by the by the compression driver. So what I did first is. Is determine so if I have this limitation of a four foot or one meter twenty um, um, size of uh, my plywood, is is to determine how long by approximation I could make uh, could make the the horn 
the, 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 which is the overall horn length. And so what I did is just draw a line here um, through the middle, uh, calculate the circle here to the middle, and then we got the same distance, of course, down. Um, so really, the, the, the distance of the horn would be the length here times two, and then uh, plus the, the circle here. And, and what I use then is the, the middle of the um, the middle of the horn as, as the actual length of the, the um, of the horn. So. So I measured that and then I looked um, by approximation in my little table that I keep in a spreadsheet where I keep all the musical notes and I saw that the F um, here um, represented a 1.964, um, so the 43 hertz um, and the quarter wavelength of a 43 hertz tone would actually be 1 meters 96 and that, that fitted well in, in that cabinet. And so I took those results, um, so from my sketch and the initial uh, measurements I started entering that parameter into my program. Now this program is horn is either you can use horn resp or AG horn. I bought or AG horn. It's a it's a I'm not sure what it was like a hundred euro or a hundred dollar license. Um, sorry, I'm having some coffee. So and here you can see this horn. So. Before we even think about folding the horn into the case and how high the divider is, first we start with the overall horn design and we'll fold it later. So later it gets folded in the box and you get the divider and so on. So really if you have to see the divider, the divider runs here and we have then folded the horn into the, into the cabinet, right? But we first need, what we start out with is, is calculating, this program can calculate the frequency response and uh, um, all kinds of things. So the, the, the maximum sound pressure, um, the, the cone excursion, and um, the, the impedance of, of the speaker design. Sorry, there's cows moving outside. Um, yes, so the first thing was to get this op optimized. And so I knew, knew from my design that I wanted to start out with a uh, two. Um, a two centimeter wide horn at the bottom and then um, flare it all out to 43.6 centimeters and that would give me um, um, by put and the, the width of the speaker would be 39 centimeters and that gives you this horn shape and then um, and this I put at I, I think 123 123rd of the um, of the total length of the horn, I put the, the base reflex exit and quite a short, um, very restrictive port. Um, so that is the overall thing. And then I, um, you can just calculate the response of that. And here you see the frequency, the, 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 the frequency response. And what you can do with this program is position the woofer inside this, um, inside this, um, inside the overall horn and I'll, I'll just show you a different one I can also put it at 0.6 so I put it much higher up in the horn right and then I can see here in red I can see the differences in the frequency response and I can see the, the, the differences in, in um, the, the, the impedance and you can see here that the, the, when I, I put it here on the shorter side of the horn that you can see that it now has slightly shifted and compressed. So the uh, we've got a, a like a three four dB uh, four hertz drop in in the resonance frequency of the woofer, and we got about uh, maybe one two hertz drop um, where the bass reflects ports it. Oh no, this is exactly the same, but it shifts here. The impedance shifts here. So um, and you see a bigger spike over here. So. You can play around with this and that also translates in whether you put the woofer here or you put it on that side. So this is of course the shorter side. Um, so here I can decide to put it here which was 86 centimeters up. So if I put that in um, 0.86. Right. So now it sits, the woofer would be sitting on this side. And you can see this is the frequency response now. Oh, quite jagged, not as smooth as, as what I had before. 
and so this 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 doesn't look too good i'm not sure what just happened here but it um my fault I made it with an open mouth so there we go so this is when you put it on the other side with 86 centimeters which is as you can see it has a much similar response as putting it on the other side um, so it's just a little bit the impedance has just different um, uh, different characteristics and it's a slight shift but there's really not much to it. Um, the only thing you have to realize is that the reflections here are a little bit closer to the back of the woofer. And I don't know the exact effect of that, but I chose it to have it on the other side, um, given the, the minimal differences. So, as you can now see, let's just put this back to the original why I had it, 1 meter 70 in. Um, that is then the horn design. And now the nice thing about this program is that you can use this function, which is called list contour, and it will sp spit out a couple of measurements for you. So every at every length of the horn, it says how much the su the, the the surface area of the expanding horn is, and 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 it will calculate it both circular as as a circular horn and also as a square as a square. So in this column is how wide it is. So if we look here. So we start out with the 2.2 centimeters that I said I started out with at the bottom of the horn. So we're talking here. This is the 2.2 centimeters, and then we can just pick a length, for example, after 40 centimeters, um, or so let's say a foot or about so, um, say 31 centimeters. It's 8.9 centimeters wide. So 30 centimeters in, it's 8.9 centimeters wide, and so on and so on. Um, so that way you can plot your whole horn uh, and have all the widths. And, um, and for example, if we take the width of the horn here, plus the width of the horn here, plus the, the thickness of the divider, then we have the internal case width, um, the in uh, enclosure width um, that we have here um, at the bottom. So if we do this, 2.2 centimeters plus here at the end it's 43.6 um, plus the thickness of the wood which is 12 millimeters um, we get to the uh, the total internal dimension that we have here at the bottom and we can do the same uh, around here so when we have the horn at 86 and at 1 meters 15 or whatever this is you have to calculate this circle then um, where it starts you know, the circle would probably um, be running somewhere here so this this is the, the area from 86 centimeters to 1 meters 14 or so where it's actually curving out where it's curving around here and so as i said i take um half the height so if i if you look at the height of this the horn of the, the width of the horn at every point i take half of that and and then plot um the the curvature here how long that that, that part of the horn is Um, and then the only difference was that I actually left some extra space in here. So this horn ended up a little bit lower. Um, the divider ended up a little bit lower. It started curving earlier because I just left some extra space. So it's a bit more roomy at the top. And, and I also put this, this sort of shield in, in, the, in the top. So that's how you started. So the whole calculation, and that is really your answer, Klaus, and everybody who is interested in folding the horn, is that you all the design and the positioning of the woofer and, and the positioning of the port and how big it is you can all enter that in this, this program and then once you're done that's when you start folding it and then you um, end up with your enclosure length um, you know where i have to slant the top and you have the front and you have the divider and that is the back wall so and that's how you end up and so then what I did is not use this one, but I, I then I started ending up with the, 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 fi the final specs. And um, just to be clear about this, this picture here, um, these braces were never implemented. This base reflex port became actually uh, more like this. So it became um, two parallel pieces of wood. 
and 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 in between you have the port so it's a slot port running the full width of the of the um, um, of the enclosure of, of the speaker and that is really uh, that um, and one thing I haven't really mentioned is what, what I also did with this initial sketch is is um, calculate the overall volume because in my calculation of, of, of this thing it says I think here it says that it's 176 liters um, this space of this horn um, but I know that if you look at the video and that of course I've got this taking away space as well so it is a little bit of an approximation um, because everything in the, in the in the space whether it's the woofer or it's the compression driver or it's these um, the, the, the frame of the or the divider everything takes away from the volume and I wanted to sort of end up with an effective volume of around 172 liters that was my goal and if you look at the the so one of the things I did by sketching this out, I calculated that the internal space would have been 190 liters, but then you lose a couple of three liters for the divider, you lose um, for all the, the frame, you lose a couple of liters. The base reflex port is a loss. Um, this is a couple of liters and so on and so on. So it actually reduced from 190 to about 173, 174 liters. Um, and so you wanna also keep that in mind that you, in the end you end up with a uh, with enough with with the targeted vol volume for the internal um, free air space um, for of your speaker. Um, so yeah, really that's that's it. Um, I hope this clears up how you, we get through the dimensions. So it's all based on on the calculations of the horn and what the, what is really what the spreadsheet returns. Um, and then we fit this whole design into into um, into the enclosure, and, um, and 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 that's how you then get to your final in internal measurements once you consider all these um, thicknesses and so on. Um, yeah, and then you know you end up with um, the exact panel sizes and so on. And these are, I think, the exact panel sizes that I ended up with. So, um, thank you for watching, um, and um, I hope this this this. Uh, I said I hope this this sort of uh, clears things up with how to do the fold at home and how to get um, um, the, the divider right. Now there is a simpler way as well. Um, if you don't have access to a program, let me just see here, and this is this website. So mhaudio.nl, they also have a, um, a, a simplified measure. It is a little bit different, but you could use this calculator. And basically you just give the resonance frequency of the, um, the, the driver and the, the surface area of the woofer. And you then press calculate and it will actually tell you all the, the, the lengths of how to do it. But that is only this design that you see here. Um, But it might be an example that you can just just look at. So this is also very um, very much a, 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 um, a standard design with some standard measurements where the, where the port goes, uh, where the woofer goes, and etc. So it's 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 um, it's uh, yeah, it delivers two 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 designs out of this. Um, again, you can choose then whether you want to have the the, the one the, the the divider coming towards you or um, away from you. Um, so. That is another tool that you could look at. This is free. You can just go to the website um, mh-audio.nl and then there's a, a section calculators and they have a shitload of calculators. I can really recommend it. They have very good calculators here, um, whether it's crossovers or um, anything, Zobel Networks. Um, it has the, this, this website has very good calculators. So that's it so far. Um, thank you for watching. Have a great day and I'll hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye.